So hey, this one is about how poverty hurts the rich. Now, the first way that poverty hurts the rich is that or increase in poverty hurts the rich or increased inequality is that it makes it harder to do business. Uh, I can give the example of Henry Ford. Now, Henry Ford, according to at least one article that I read, is credited for creating the middle class. And the way that it said that he did this is that he gave his employees a good wage. He increased a lot of the money that his employees were getting. And when he did this, it worked so well that he was saying that he wished he had done it sooner because it reduced his employee turnover, it reduced absenteeism, it probably reduced um, the amount of theft at his factory, Henry Ford, Ford Motors, and it would increase his customer base because his employees could afford to buy his cars. And you can kind of see this across the board. If your employees are unable to, you know, work at your one job and they have to hurry over to another job in order to make ends meet, they have two or three jobs, how much time um, and mental energy are they able to devote to your company? If you're in a country like that, it's harder for you to find qualified workers because the people can't afford education, for example, as well as people in another country where there isn't as much poverty. If they can afford their education, what quality of education is it that they got? They're going to have constant issues, like, like I said, with respect to having to work other jobs, the logistics of doing that, of not having as much sleep because they're working all these extra jobs, not having as much quality family time, the time to spend with their family. When they get sick, it's likely that they're going to be suffering from chronic diseases. It's less likely that they're going to be able to find resolutions for their diseases and so on, whatever problems they might have. There might be, you know, a high amount of a particular disease in the popula population. So it's harder to find good employees, to keep good employees, to reduce the amount of time that they spend away from work for whatever reason. Poverty can basically make having your business hard. It's hard to start your business because, you know, there's probably not as many people that you can ask for loans, etc., including yourself when you're starting it up. And it's harder to do business, for example. The next way, and with respect to starting up a new business, um, even if you're already rich, you probably want to start up new businesses. So it's harder to start those businesses and, and find people who want your products if the people that you're selling to, even if you aren't selling to them directly um, and you're selling to other richer people, they ultimately, everybody depends on the lower class or the lowest class, or the most poor. And if there's a lot of those poor people, they don't have that much extra income, disposable income, to spend on things. The next way that poverty hurts the rich, and I did want to make a distinction between um, making business, making it hard to do business, is that it's easier to go broke. When you have a business, and directly or indirectly, you are depending on the lowest class of people um, to do business, you know, because if there's a high amount of poverty in whatever country you're working in, or just, just even the world, the region that you're in, or the world in general, 
it's going to be easier to lose everything and go broke. I was looking at this video with one of these people who are in Shark Tank. You know, the show where people, um, they're a bunch of rich business people and they are presented with opportunities to invest in businesses. And the guy was saying that he had friends. This guy is a millionaire, multi-millionaire. And he's saying that he had friends who lost everything because supposedly they weren't diversified enough. And as a result, you know, you have to, he's saying like, he's saying that it sucks to start over at 40. And that's the thing. When an economy is, there's a high amount of poverty in it, I am pretty sure that it's going to be less stable. When there's any kind of shock to the economy, as in an uh, epidemic or a economic downturn, like a recession or something, it's going to be a lot easier to lose everything. Uh, because the people who the entire society depends on, they can very easily lose their jobs. And in turn, because of that domino effect, you have a lot of other businesses that go out, that, that go broke, that go bankrupt as a result of that. There is always going to be that domino effect where um, people are going to have to cut back on their purchases when things go bad, whether, you know, temporarily or for a much longer period of time. It's always going to be a lot easier to lose your business and go bankrupt if there's a high amount of poverty in your country or in your region and the world in general um, that can happen and more especially so when you're uh, not as diversified but it can happen more likely because if this can happen if there's going to be a higher amount of people who lose everything amongst the poor because they don't have as much money to fall back on, then it stands to reason that it's going to affect every industry out there. Some industries are going to be less affected than others, like entertainment or travel are really easy to be affected when people don't have as much disposable income or any disposable income at a specific point in time. Uh, other in industries like real estate probably are going to be hardier but at the same time it can it can put you out of business the other way that poverty can hurt the rich is that it can depress um, life expectancy and a, a very simple way of looking at it is that if you have a lot of poor people in a particular country it means that they are not going to be able to afford expensive procedures to extend their lives. Whether it's surgical procedures, whether it is um, medicines, um, or just, you know, a lifestyle of, you know, being able to exercise and do whatever is necessary to increase their, their health and their health outcomes. If, if people can't afford to have different surgical uh, procedures performed on them. It means that the doctors in that particular country or that region are not going to have as much practice doing that particular procedure. And if they don't have as much practice, it probably means that they're not going to have as much success, you know, in terms of the danger of having a particular procedure in a particular region um, and it means that when it means that when the rich need a similar procedure yeah if it's something that can wait you can go to any country that you want to have that procedure done completely outside of your region for example but um, if it's something that you need to have done right away an emergency procedure it means you have to do it in your country, probably. And with, you know, doctors and surgeons who are less adept 
at performing these procedures, then it increases the likelihood that you might suffer from incompetence or lack of experience and succumb to whatever problem might arise. In addition to the fact that if people can't afford a particular drug or let's say an anti-venom, um, an anti-venom, uh, whatever it might be, it means that if you get a snake bite, then there it is. It's not going to be available to you when you need it. And this is something that is going to be very, very time sensitive. Or let's say, for example, there's something that's pretty contagious and people are poor, so they can't um, afford, you know, antibiotics or something like that in order to reduce the prevalence of this disease in the in the population. So they don't go to the doctor and a lot of people have a particular uh, contagious disease. It means that you're very likely to catch that disease because so many people in the population have it because they can't afford to uh, prevent it or have something that will make sure that they don't get it, you know. I mean, vaccines are very prevalent, but vaccines are a good example. And if you have a population that's not educated, they might be resistant to va vaccinations. And that disease might just be out there. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that having a, a large number of poor people or a lot of poverty in a country or a region or just in the world in general can hurt um, rich people. It's, there's a lot of ways that it can get to you. Just because you live in a mansion and everything is, is really pretty and beautiful in your area, you're made, you know, depending on how much you pay her and where she works, she interacts with other poor people. You know, you're, I don't know, the person who cleans your house, aside from the maid who is there, or just your driver, or any of these people could potentially pass on a disease to you. Or if they're treated badly or something, they might have it in their, their head to do an inside job and, you know, hold you ransom or something like that. If you have a lot of discontent where you are, that can get to you. And even if it can't get to you, it means that you need to pay for all of this security around you. You can't just walk out into the street. Um, and anyway, I think I might have a couple more points. Um, let me just go over what it is. So the one thing is, it's hard to do business. That's how poverty can affect the rich. It makes it harder to do business. When you have a business, well, it makes it harder to do business and start a business. When you have a business, it makes your business more fragile. Poverty is going to make it easier for your business to fail outright. Poverty also depresses the uh, life expectancy of everybody included. Um, so these are three ways that I think that poverty makes inescapable problems for rich people. And I guess I'll come up with a couple more in another video.